Nos encontramos en Mallet Lodge, residencia eh, del embajador eh, británico, en compañía de, del embajador Tim Stu. Muchas gracias por recibirnos en su casa. Eh, vamos a conversar sobre diversos temas de interés eh, entre eh, nuestros países. Ambassador, what does it mean to have celebrated the 70th anniversary of the reign of Queen Elizabeth II? Oh, it's been a fantastic celebration uh, and it's a really big date and a, a historic moment um, because not, not only is it uh, the Queen's 96th birthday, but it's also, as you say, 70 years of her uh, on the throne giving service to Britain and the world uh, and it makes her the longest serving monarch in British history. So it's been incredible and we have really enjoyed celebrating here in Panama. We've had a number of events. We have uh, planted some trees uh, to bring the Queen's green canopy here to Panama. So we planted trees in uh, King's College and here at my residence. Um, uh, under that initiative, more than a million trees have been planted in the world under the, under the canopy. Uh, we had our official celebration here, the Queen's birthday party at my residence. Uh, we also had a royal tea party, a, a big networking event. Uh, and then we concluded on Saturday at Multi Plaza Mall with a uh, British street party with all sorts of performers and food and drink and a, a real celebration of British culture. So it's been a fantastic celebration and we hope Panama has, has enjoyed it. The Queen is 96 years old. Uh, we see some signs of, of relief. Uh, some of our descendants are taking on responsibilities that uh, previously fell directly to her. Um, age takes its, its toll. Um, will the Queen, do you think, will the Queen remain in office until the end? Or maybe she will abdicate as, as kings and queens in neighboring uh, monarchies? Mm -hmm. So, as you say, she's, she's 96. Uh, she's uh, had a phenomenally busy life uh, of service. Uh, she's visited, uh, made over 260 international visits, including the very first one uh, when she became the Queen was here to Panama in 1953, which we're very proud of. Um, but uh, no, I mean, she has, she doesn't travel internationally anymore and hasn't done for a few years. Um, she is 96, so inevitably she is devolving and delegating some of her duties to the, to the rest of the royal family. She's always done that. Um, but no, she, she was very clear when she acceded to the throne uh, that she was going to dedicate her life um, uh, in service to the public, uh, her public, her people and her country. And that is what she's done and that is what she is still doing. She's still working hard for Britain and the world today. Institutions such as the Commonwealth have been maintained thanks to the impulse that, that the Queen uh, has given to it. Uh, Will it lose some relevance at the time of, of a generational change? No, I think it's going to gain even more relevance. I think um, she has, Her Majesty has been, as you say, a driving force uh, in the Commonwealth and establishing it and so on. Um, you know, it's an extraordinary organization of 54 uh, countries uh, across the world. Um, a very large population of the world are, are, are members of the Commonwealth. Uh, we have more countries that want to join. Um, I think it's only going to get more relevant. You know, we're in a world which is facing um, more and more crises. We've had the pandemic. Um, we have economic uh, challenges at the moment, particularly as a result of Russia's aggression uh, in Ukraine. Um, and we need to face those challenges uh, together. And also, of course, um, you know, it's, it's also uh, it builds up um, friendships, um, values with shared values. And, and trading relationships, which is really important. So I think it will, you know, it's an extraordinary grouping and I think it will um, only go from, from strength to strength from here on. Now, uh, Britain has been rocked by the Brexit uh, process. What have been the price that, that the British people has paid for this decision? Uh, uh, is there still something to happen? Well, look, I, 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 you know, it's a fact. Britain left Europe, um, European Union, uh, some time ago. Um, it's happened. 
but that has not changed the fact that we continue to work very closely with the European Union uh, since our exit um, and, and we will continue to do so geographically uh, they are you know Europe is right next to us that doesn't that hasn't changed and um, politically and in terms of our values we have shared values we have a very shared outlook on the world and as I said you know as with the Commonwealth we have uh, the world is facing all sorts of challenges at the moment and we have to work together and, and we continue to work together. We just do it now outside of the EU rather than from within. Uh, another reality that has impacted the world economy is the war between Russia and Ukraine and uh, face, facing this with a complex situation uh, by Brexit and by the pandemic. Uh, what does this conflict uh, represent for Great Britain? I think we've been very shocked by it. Uh, you know, this is an appalling and unprovoked aggression uh, by one country against another, by Russia against Ukraine. Um, and as you say, it is um, causing real hardship uh, economically at the moment. We're seeing inflation um, in the UK, but, but here in Panama too, globally, um, as a result. Um, and there's a lot of disinformation around from, from the Russians. Uh, they are, at the moment, I know, particularly claiming that um, the challenges on, on global food distribution uh, are due to sanctions which have been placed on them. No, absolutely not. Uh, the reasons for those, those, those problems are because Russia is blocking wheat exports from Ukraine, for example. That's not the Ukrainians refusing to, to export or sanctions. There are no sanctions on, on, on those food supplies and deliberately not. The sanctions are there to encourage Russia to think harder to stop this war. They're the only ones at the moment who can stop it and they have that choice. They could do that tomorrow if they wanted and they choose to keep going instead. So, you know, we have to, Britain is, is going to continue to work with uh, others uh, across the world uh, globally to listen and understand other countries' perspectives. We've talked quite a bit to the Panamanian government here, for example, about this and what are the impacts here, how can we address those together. And we're doing that um, through uh, organizations, institutions like the G7 group of countries, uh, through the development banks and so on. You know, this unfortunately is a conflict which is going on because Russia will not stop it. Um, so we have to address both those methods of how we can encourage Russia to stop, uh, but also how we can deal with the impacts uh, together with others across the globe. Uh, energy dependency. Uh one of these impacts, no? it, it is an issue that has skyrocketed in, in Europe. Uh, faced with threats like this war and global warming, uh, what are the British plans uh, in terms well, of ecology? As I say, we, we will continue. I mean, we, we set a, uh, with others at COP26 on climate change and so on, we set a, a demanding set of targets for the world to, to, uh, to look after our planet. So uh, we continue to do that, but you're right. At the same time, you know there are there are real issues on uh, energy supply at the moment as a result of this conflict. So we have to work with others on that, um, and and we will continue to do so, working with you know the EU, the G7, the Commonwealth, uh, our friends and allies across the world, um, including Panama, to see how we can address uh, those challenges. Okay, you arrived at Panama uh, about a year ago. A little bit less, about eight months, nine months, yeah. Uh, did you have any um, idea of, of, of the ambience of where you were uh, coming? Has it changed with the time uh, that you have been here? Uh, yes, yeah, so I visited uh, Panama the first time probably 23, 24 years ago uh, and um, loved it then and wanted to come back. It's taken me a little while to come back but I'm here and delighted to be here and everything I uh, read about Panama, uh, all the people I talked to in, in the UK before I came to prepare myself um, just got me more excited about, about being able to come and, and surf here. And um, so have I been surprised? Um, n not really. I think uh, the only thing I would say is, is uh, people said to me it's a very warm and welcoming country. Uh, very friendly and I, I've absolutely seen that and that has been very nice whether um, talking, um, talking to and meeting people here in Panama City 
or on some of my travels up to Boca de Toro and Boquete, we've had such a warm welcome. Uh, and that has been uh, really good to see. And also the strength of, of the partnership we have with the government has, uh, has been a real pleasure to, 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 to come and uh, to find that in place. And of course, I just want to keep building on that. What are, are the most uh, relevant points of our bilateral agenda? So uh, we have a, a very strong strategic partnership, uh, as, as I say, and I've mentioned one or two things. You know, climate change, we see uh, Panama is a very strong partner and ally with us. We are um, supporting in both directions. So we have announced um, a two million, fund, a two million pounds worth of UK funds to support the new uh, CMAR, the new, uh, the new uh, marine um, uh, channel here, uh, protected area here with, with other countries in the region. Um, but there are lots of other objectives from, from COP26 and on the climate change that we will continue to work closely with Panama on. Um, we also have worked uh, very closely uh, here with those tackling illicit finance, which is a shared concern for my country and this one. Um, we have lots of help we can, we can give each other on that, so we're working very closely on that. I mentioned trade, of course, um, I want to see that grow. I think we do okay. We have about 300 million pounds worth of, of trade in both directions um, in, the, in the last year or so, but I think we can do better. So um, during my fairly short time here, we've had several visits already. We had uh, back in December, uh, Minister of Exports, Mike Freer, uh, came to help us uh, promote the trade agenda and see what more we could do. Uh, more recently, Baroness Hooper, who is the trade envoy uh, for the British Prime Minister uh, for Panama, uh, came and visited us. Um, during her visit, for example, uh, she signed an agreement with um, Her Excellency the Foreign Minister, uh, Erika Moines, um, which is to promote clean, sustainable growth between our two countries. So there's lots of steps we're taking, which are there to really strengthen that partnership still further. Um, and also to build the trade links and the cultural links. We have seen in education also that uh, uh, school uh, is, is growing. Right. We're, we're, as I mentioned, I think I'm very keen to see more bilingualism in this country. I'm working on my own Spanish, también, but, but you know, we need, uh, people keep telling me that we need more bilingualism in this country, so we're looking into how we might help in that area. And then, of course, we have already um, for, for many years, our Chile Scholarship Programme. Uh, we're just doing, about to announce the results of, of that this year, but I'm delighted that we're going to be sending um, scholars from this country again to the UK for what is an intense, but I know very enjoyable uh, experience of postgraduate um, study. So uh, we celebrate all of those things. We're also looking to see what more we can do to support STEM subjects in this country, uh, uh, in this country as well. So yeah, on the education side, we have an active uh, program as well. And again, I want to see that grow still further. Thank you, Ambassador, for uh, your questions, for your time. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll always have the door open uh, and for keep uh, chatting in. Thank you.